Hey everyone, this is Sean and you're watching Try Accept, where I share tips on cracking the machine learning interview. Today we're looking into the systems design problem build a movie recommendation service from scratch. This is a common interview question, especially for ML focused roles. It gives you a chance to display your understanding of data collection, feature engineering, training pipelines, and more, specifically in a production setting. I have been asked this question by both Huawei and Amazon. I've been on the other side of the interview process and asked similar questions to my candidates. So let's take a look at a set of requirements you may be given. We need to recommend movies to users based on their preferences. The system should handle millions of users. Recommendations should be personalized and relevant. The system should be scalable and performant. We need to handle both cold starts and real-time updates. Remember to clarify your understanding of these requirements and ask questions to your interviewer. For instance, you may ask about cold starts, which simply refers to new users with no data. Also, I recommend asking questions for the sake of showing you put in effort to understanding the problem, even if the question is just rephrasing the requirements. Right before we jump in, please check out my website, tryaccept.io, where you can pre-register for my machine learning interview prep platform. So the architecture of our system will consist of several key components, data collection pipeline, feature engineering, machine learning training service, and the recommendation service. There are other elements which we will touch on later. We will collect data from two different sources. First, the users, which will provide explicit feedback in the form of user ratings and reviews of movies. They will also provide implicit feedback, watch time, clicks, and search history. This data will be streamed to us directly from their web client. The second source is a movie data store. This contains movie metadata, genre, cast, release date, plot summaries, and more. This brings us to our first question, which is how will we collect the data? Well, we will get fancy and use Kafka, a distributed event store and stream processing platform. It excels at real-time event handling at scale, which is perfect for the user streamed data as it allows the web client to completely decouple. This will allow the web client to send data through post requests. This same service will handle the movie metadata. When metadata is updated, it will be ingested into Kafka. The collected data will then be stored in some form of database. Because we're operating at scale, we're going to use a non-relational database such as MongoDB for its horizontal scaling ability. You may be asked to provide a schema for what each document would contain. In our case, let's just say each user's unique identifier is a key and their movie rankings are the value. Next, feature engineering. The feature engineering step processes two main types of data, the user interactions and the movie metadata, which we just collected. Both types of data will pass through a data transformation job. This job will be scheduled to run at logical intervals. This could be daily or hourly to keep the recommendations relevant. In this case, I don't recommend any particular pre-built service. Instead, we will use a simple bare bones worker. For user features, this job will compute rolling statistics such as average rating and game preferences. We will also create temporal features such as viewing patterns. For the movies, we will utilize the metadata to create dense embeddings and generate categorical features. All these features we will then store in a feature store such as Feast. This will allow us to maintain feature freshness and implement and strict feature versioning and validation to ensure model stability and include a backfill mechanism for computing historical features when adding new feature types. This will come in useful for testing. The machine learning training job once again runs on logical intervals, potentially hourly or daily. It fetches the latest features from the feature store and performs the final transformation steps. Train test splitting with attention towards temporal boundaries. It will handle data sampling to manage the massive scale of user movie interactions. We will further implement negative sampling, where for each positive user movie interaction, the pipeline intelligently samples negative examples to maintain a realistic distribution. This job will train and test the model. It will further implement automatic 
hyperparameter tuning. Mentioning this and other little pieces of information about machine learning really sells that you are a machine learning engineer. You're not just a software engineer, you're a machine learning engineer. And it may also open the doors for you to discuss optimization and your knowledge of it, which I will do a video on later. For example, you could also mention implementing early stopping to prevent overfitting. To do all of this, you could use Azure's Machine Learning Studio or AWS's Deep Learning Containers. You could also use a generic worker with access to a GPU for this. The model we're going to recommend is a neural collaborative filtering model that combines traditional matrix factorization with deep learning to capture complex user movie interactions. The architecture processes user features and movie features through separate dense layers, concatenates them and passes them through additional dense layers to predict user movie affinity. This is a cutting edge model, so hopefully it will impress your interviewer. But remember, this is a systems design interview, so don't rant for too long about the model. Finally, the model will be stored in a model registry, which also stores model artifacts hyperparameters, evaluation metrics, and the feature set used for training. Each model version will also be tagged with performance metrics and validation results, enabling easy comparison and rollback if needed. Okay, so on to the final section, the recommendation service itself, which is a high performance serving layer that handles real time recommendation requests through a REST API, deployed as a horizontally scalable microservice behind a load balancer. This service will need to access user data and movie data. It will further leverage a Redis cache. For each request, it follows a simple flow. First, checking Redis cache for pre-computed recommendations, then falling back to real-time computation if needed. In real-time mode, it fetches user and movie features, runs them through two stages, a fast retrieval stage to get candidate movies, followed by a ranking stage using the neural CF model to score and sort these candidates. The entire process is designed to complete within 100 milliseconds, with auto automatic fallbacks to simpler recommendation strategies if this threshold is exceeded. Earlier, we mentioned cold starts or users with no data. A simple but effective approach is to implement a simple logic based on their sign up profile. From this, you could use their geographic location to recommend the most popular movies in their area. This is also a useful fallback if there's downtime for the model or if it times out. There are some nice things that we're going to look at adding in. First, logging and monitoring, which seems to always be forgotten in systems design interviews, which is funny because any engineer would tell you it's crucial. So we're going to implement two services, Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring key metrics like latency, throughput, and recommendation quality. The final thing that we should possibly think about adding in is orchestration. Heading back to data transformation, if you really wanted to industrialize this ETL and ML pipeline, you could recommend orchestrating it all with Airflow. Be sure to understand that Airflow is effectively an organizer, not a worker, and express that clearly in your interview. This tool is not entirely necessary, but it's nice to have and could spruce up your architecture. Just keep in mind that there is a limit to the amount of proprietary or third-party services that you can add into your architecture before it becomes cost ineffective. Okay, so that's it from me. I would really appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Sean from Try Accept. Thank you.